Interesting though it is to say censorship continues to be a normal feature of life in America and especially on social media. Most recently, uh, Debbie showed me this, she spotted this, uh, Facebook and Instagram remove Robert Kennedy Jr.'s nonprofit uh, for misinformation. It's called the Children's Health Defense. That's the name of the group. And it's kind of a, you know, a vaccine skeptic group that uh, counters the government's policies. And uh, Kennedy, this is uh, Robert Kennedy Jr., says, quote, Facebook is acting here as a surrogate for the federal government's crusade to silence all criticism of draconian government policies. Now, there's a key distinction that's being made here between medical information, pure and simple, uh, something like what are the results of studies that show that vaccines work or work very well or work somewhat well. They don't prevent transmission, but they do restrict the severity of a disease. That's the medical side of it. But then there's the policy side of it. We're going to have vaccine mandates, or we're going to have a mandatory shutdown, or we're going to allow uh, parlors to stay open, but not churches. These are policy decisions. And I think what Kennedy is saying is that Facebook doesn't distinguish. If the government's against it, it's misinformation, and you're going to be shot down. Now, uh, I've had on this podcast um, Alex Berenson, by the way, a very well-respected journalist. He used to, um, he's worked both for the New York Times, the Denver Post, and he's a COVID vaccine skeptic. Now, Twitter um, banned him in August of 2021, and Alex sued. Alex sued Twitter, and one of the benefits of a lawsuit, lawsuits are expensive, all kinds of reasons not to do them, but Alex evidently has the means, and so he sues, and forces Twitter to release discovery of internal communications that are going on at Twitter about Alex and about why he should be banned. And evidently, the banning of Alex was not due to Twitter. In fact, there were Twitter employees who thought that Alex had not violated any of their policies. But... Uh, the pressure to ban Alex came from the Biden administration. And, um, and um, uh, here's a Twitter employee, and, and Alex has the goods on all this and has been writing about it. Uh, the Twitter employee is saying to another Twitter employee, they really wanted to know about Alex Berenson. Who's they? It's the Biden administration, the Biden health establishment. Um, and they say, quote, he was the epicenter of disinfo that radiated outwards to the persuadable public. So the Biden administration um, saw Alex as a threat. And they're like, Alex is giving plausibility and credibility to critiques. We can't have that. And so this guy, this is a fellow, by the way, named, um, named uh, Andrew Slavitt. He's the senior advisor to President Biden's COVID response team. Uh, he and he he admitted that he's working in close concert with with Ron Klain, Biden's chief of staff, Biden himself, and um, it was the government that pressured Twitter. That Twitter needs to do more to uh, attack misinformation. They need to do more to get rid of Alex. Now, uh, in July of 2021. Uh, July of 2021, this is uh, just weeks before Alex was banned, Joe Biden uh, says that misinformation is, quote, killing people. And it looks like that was the precipitating cause of Twitter banning Alex. So Biden comes out and goes, this is killing people. And Twitter suspends Berenson for the first time right after that. So um so uh, Alex even has communications from Twitter. Here's a Twitter employee, quote, I've taken a pretty close look at his account and I don't think any of it, any of it is violative. So, um, so Twitter it, I was, was not going to do this by itself. The key point here is that what we are seeing is a certain type of fascism, right? What is fascism? A close coordination of the government and the private sector to achieve a governmental goal. Uh, Debbie and I were talking over lattes this morning, and Debbie's like, what does Facebook know about health? What does Meta know about health? Nothing. What does YouTube know about health? What does Google know? Nothing. So they are mouthpieces of the government. 
But when we say mouthpieces of the government, we need to be a little careful. They're not mouthpieces of any government. If Trump wins re-election in 2024, Trump is now the government. It doesn't mean Facebook and YouTube are going to be taking cues from the Trump administration. No, they'll continue to take their cues from the left. So it's only because this is a left-wing government. But the simple truth of it is, and this is where Alex is on strong ground, this is why they put, they gave Alex Berenson back his account. Twitter basically apologized and said they did the wrong thing. Why? Because the direct collaboration of the federal government with a private sector institution to censor people violates the First Amendment. You can take it to court and you can take it all the way to the Supreme Court. And it's a little bit of a slam dunk case. The difficulty is in proving the direct collaboration between the government and Twitter. Alex Berenson, it seems, has come very close to doing that. We need a lot more of this in order to bring this regime of social social media censorship down uh, so that we can all breathe and speak more freely again.